Hi, my name is Chris, and uh, I am going to talk to you today about how I went from being a CRPS rec for 14 years to having my life back. Uh, uh, just five months ago, I was uh, contemplating suicide, not contemplating it, I had actually actively planned it and had just about everything in place to kill myself. Uh, after 14 years of un problems with unemployment, unemployment, lost relationships, um, and absolute psychological and physical torture. Uh, in, in March of 2014, I was I was ready to 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 pull the plug. I had prepared my will. Uh, this is a letter from the law, law office. The last letter they sent that said, "Hey, you have to come in and sign your stuff and file it so that people know." So it's officially recognized. I was using books to write research how I could kill myself with pills and medications. I had got I had five of them uh, ready to go, five of the six that I wanted. Uh, I'm not going to tell any to talk about exactly which medications they were because I don't want to help anybody hurt themselves. I was in contact with a suicide assistance organization. Uh, I was begging my parents to help me kill myself with assisted suicide. I had uh, I had. Um, I had, uh, I was going to, because it was so complicated to get the medications uh, at one point, because I couldn't get the sixth one that I really needed, I was going to hang myself. Uh, here are my handcuffs that I bought so that I couldn't save myself. And this was the clip-on noose that I was, that I had. This is the clip-on part of the noose that I had. And I, all I did anymore was scout locations to kill myself. And so this video is going to talk about how... I went from being that desperate and that incapable of functioning uh, to to having a having a life again, dating again, having a job. I'm about to start at work in two weeks. I'm thrilled about that, um, obviously, and uh, I can laugh again. I can laugh again. I can joke again. It was just incredibly bad for a long time. So. Uh, I, just to quickly give you an update before I go through the whole story, uh, to tell you what, and just to give you the point here is that there's just an amazing, 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 I've seen over 120 doctors in my 14 year journey with CRPS and doctors do not impress me easily. I've met a few 10 who I thought were good individuals who tried really hard, uh, but they didn't help. Then there's this uh, amazing, amazing, amazing guy in, uh, in Traunstein, Germany now. And his name is Dr. Goemann. Traunstein is spelled T-R-A-U-N-S-T-E-I-N. Uh, Traunstein is between Munich and Salzburg uh, on the A8, I believe, on the A8 Autobahn. And uh, he and I have a 10-year or 11-year relationship because of this problem. And when I met him, in, when I met him in 2003, I believe. Uh, we we were just both still stumped by CRPS and um, and it was uh, he worked hard to help me and we discussed a few medications he prescribed some stuff for me but you know in the end it didn't work out but in the end after ten year friendship ten years of writing back and forth occasionally to discuss what the options were what the medic what the what the disease could be as I was working on this stuff. And I couldn't deal with my life anymore and checked into a mental hospital because where I spent a night in lockdown, I was there for three weeks. I spent a night in lockdown where I couldn't hurt myself. And um, right then, right then, Dr. Guman comes through and he writes his email to me. And because after I'd sent him some stuff about um, medications that I found, like nalt naltrexone, I'd sent him information on that kind of stuff. And he said, Chris, don't kill yourself now. You're, you've never been closer to a cure. And, uh, and Dr. Goman has simply taken, uh, he's simply taken research from here, there, and there, and there, that, that part of which I've provided with him with, and most of which he is now, he's, I'm really impressed with how he is so interested in this disease and how to help people. Because I just kept saying, Dr. Goman, we have to find a way to destroy this horrible disease so that people don't have to suffer anymore. And he's, 
just amazing. It's just an amazing man. My family's so thankful because my mom, mom and dad, they thought they'd lost their son in March. They were sure they're everybody. They were thought they were going to lose me. And I, about three weeks ago, I celebrated my 47th birthday. And uh, for the first time, I'm, I invited everybody. I, I normally don't celebrate birthdays, and I, and I invited everybody to my I called it my resurrection party because I, can, I have my life back again. And I had my best friends there and my mom and dad, and it, it was wonderful. So the, the long and short of what this video will be about is that I'm going to, um, is, uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, a little bit about the background of my, my disease, what I dealt with for 14 years, everything I tried. I mean, I've tried everything from sympathetic lumbar blocks to uh, $5,000 electrical stimulation units. I won't say exactly which one it was, but it didn't work, um, to hyperbaric oxygen, uh, 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 all kinds of medications, massive rehabilitation, and in the end, uh, I just I just kept getting worse. And in the last few years, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, I just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And then I'm going to tell you about Dr. Goman and what a little bit what he, about what he's doing because I've. I spent so much time in the system and doing research uh, that, uh, hold on here, where did I put that? Oh, here it is. I spent, so this is just my research folder for last year. This is, uh, this is the second half of 2013, first half of 2014. Although about one little part of this is actually, are, are actually my medical records for the year, for the year. So basically I came down with a disease in 2014. Uh, two th I'm sorry, I came down with the disease in 2000, August of 2000, after a minor, minor pinprick in my feet during acupuncture. Long story why I was there, but uh, I, I walked out of the acupuncture and three minutes later, I, I got into the car and started driving home on the, I, I lived in Miami at the time, I started driving home and on the freeway at 65 miles an hour, my feet stopped working. And I can't really describe it any other way. They just stopped working and I had explosive pain. I couldn't function anymore. It was terrifying. I spent, I spent two weeks, I think, crawling around on my hands and knees at home because I'd moved in with my parents briefly because I was in between, uh, in a phase in my life where, I, where I'd given up one job and I was gonna move uh, I moved and I was coincidentally at home at that point in my life. I had, I'd had jobs, you know, as an engineer in the United States, but right at that point I was at home. So for, I spent two weeks crawling around on my hands and knees in my mom and dad's apartment. And after two weeks I gave up and I got, I, I ordered a wheelchair. And so I spent three weeks in, three months in the wheel, I think two months in the wheelchair and my dad and, and trying to figure out what the heck was going on, searching wildly through the internet for all kinds of things it could be. Because I was like, this is not normal, you know, because I thought if it was a broken bone, if it was broken anything, it would, it would heal. But it wasn't healing. It wasn't getting better. And, you know, after two months, my dad said, if you, know, if you don't get out of that chair now, you'll never get out. And I agreed with him. And uh, I, I went through a lot of pain. I, mean, I had such explosive pain at that time. After I took 10 steps in a day, I would be up at night with pain that the only way I can describe it is that it felt like somebody driving a train over my feet, parking it there and getting out and throwing away the keys. It's the only way I can describe it. I was going insane because I couldn't find anybody who was interested in helping me. I thought, I thought the whole point of hospitals was if there was something seriously wrong, you go in and they do a check, you know, they go and try and figure out what's, no, it's not how the system works. And it's not just that, like that in the United States. Um, I have to admit, in many respects, I'm impressed with the German healthcare system. Um, I mean, in many respects, I'm impressed with Germany. Uh, but uh, that's not much different here with CRPS. I have a friend at the gym, my very best friend now, because, well, I have a friend at the gym who came down with CRPS a year ago. We were just kind of friends until then. And uh, I saw one day I came back from a two, I was, I had, I hadn't been to the to the gym in a while because I'd been out hiking a lot, and uh, I said to, I saw that he was limp, limping around and had a blue bluish foot. And I said, "What's wrong with your foot?" And he said, "Well, I had an operation. No, he broke his ankle, 
and he had an operation. I, and, I, and it was like four months later, and it was still swollen and blue. I said, that's CRPS. I could tell right away because I'd had it myself for so long. The color discoloration, the excessive hair growth, the shiny skin, the sweating. When I had my CRPS, the first symptom that I, where I, where I, where it was CRPS other than the explosive pain was that uh, when I walked around, that, that, was it when I walked around, I was, uh, I was picking up cat hair and junk on the bottom of my feet. It never happened in my life. And uh, when I, when, when my best friend said that that's what was happening to him, I was like right away, yeah, that's CRPS. And he didn't believe me for six months. Didn't want to believe me. I finally talked him into it. But by then it was already too late for the first line emergency treatment like phenoxybenzamine, which is shown to be really effective if you get it in the first one, two, three months. Anyway, I was desperately looking for what I could do. So I flew to, uh, and nobody in the, in, in the United States would take me quickly. It was like a month and a half, two month waiting list to get into the pain clinics. And I flew to Europe uh, to be seen in Rotterdam, the University of Erasmus in Rot Rotterdam diagnosed me with CRPS. I flew to the University of Freiburg in Germany. Uh, uh, they said no CRPS. I went to uh, one of the leading pain specialists in Italy. He said, in Udina, Italy, he said CRPS. Then I made a mistake and I came back to Germany and I, uh, long story, but I went to a location where they did a, an injection to try and deal with pain in my feet and they injected uh, something on in my left and right groin and I won't go into the details of how that ridiculous situation happened, but it uh, did. And, uh, and uh, after, ever since then, I had pain in my groin because it just spread. Because you shouldn't, you should avoid trauma and injections. Not a good idea. Uh, including blocks. The more I read now, the more I feel and the more I think I see that the general consensus is that blocks do not do anything. Um... And then I went back to the United States, and I still wasn't better, although I could walk, you know, and uh, I could walk, but I was still desperately figuring out why my feet were still turning purple and sweating, and the hair was getting worse, and I, I felt like the, although a lot of the pain was under control, a lot of it was getting more and more out of control. I don't know how to describe that duality. It's a very complicated thing. So I called, my, my parents called, uh, I told, I was at, when I was at the University of Erasmus in Rotterdam, I looked up some studies on phenoxybenzamine and CRPS, and my family called University of Sacramento, California, got me in there to who I think was a very good doctor, Dr. Muizelar. Uh, he worked very hard to help me. He published a study on, on phenoxybenzamine and its effects on CRPS if administered early enough. And, and he was a very, very kind person, and I'm sure he worked very hard to get me better. He even had me over for dinner to talk about this, and he took a very personal interest in, in my story. Um, anyway, and then I came back to Miami. I still wasn't cured, but he put me on, he put me on 1, 150 milligrams of phenoxybenzamine a day, 15 pills a day, which I could barely handle. I came back and then I went to Vero Beach, Florida to be treated by a man named uh, Dr. Hushmand. And I, I know that he is at times controversial, but I have to say this during the year that I was under his care and he told me that exercise was good and, uh, and he gave me medications like Neurontin, Ultram, um, and some anti-inflammatory medications. Uh, what else was I taking? Uh, clonazepam, one milligram a day, I believe. Um, yeah, during that year, I, it took me 10 months and I, and I was at the end of the 10 months, I was actually, I had zero symptoms. I can't say I was cured because I don't think we can have a cure with CRPS, I think, but I had zero symptoms at the end of 10 months. And so anybody who's out there who's new to CRPS, when you get your pain pills, I thought I get my pain pills and the pain goes away. No, what happens is it takes time for your nervous system to readjust and for the proper things to be happening again. And so the first time I took it after, and so between onset and uh, treatment with, uh, with all these medications was about uh, September, October, November, December, January, five months before I got my first heavy doses of medications. And that was apparently uh, quickly enough. And after 10 months, I was better. And I thought, oh, well, great, I'm cured. I thought, hey, I'm great, I'm cured. I'm going to go to Europe now. Like I always wanted to do and find a job there and, and travel Europe. 
And so I did that. And I came over here and I stopped taking my medications. And within three months, uh, I started to have minor problems in my feet again. Uh, there was swelling that appeared again. And it was, uh, it was a problem. It was it started to become a problem again. But I thought, oh, you know what? I'm gonna do this for rehabilitation. That's how I got out of the wheelchair. Then I did try to find some medications that I had taken before, but the problem was it's difficult to find doctors who understand CRPS. And in my opinion at the time, the United States was about five years ahead of Germany in CRPS treatments. And they, and, uh, you know, and at least the, the, the specialists were. That's my opinion now. Um, and I couldn't get the medications anywhere here. I had a problem with that, but I thought, well, I'm going to keep it, get it under control with my, I could still live with it at that point. But like two, by, by the time two, two years later, I'd moved down to, uh, Bavaria and I was, uh, living close to Berchtesgaden, close to Salzburg in Austria, close to Salzburg, but still in Germany, close to this town called Traunstein where Dr. Gumann works. And, uh, uh, I just got so bad that I couldn't sit at work anymore without explosive, explosive pain. Now I realize, oh, well, I was drinking about four or five cups of coffee a day. And now I've learned in the, mean, in the meantime, coffee is one of the worst things that you can do for CRPS. Coffee is horrible for it. Back, oh, I was also drinking beer because, hell, in Germany, they've got great beer, right? So I was going out and having beer. Alcohol is just a disaster for CRPS. Oh, and I loved pretzels. And uh, pretzels, bread is a disaster for CRPS. Uh, anything with a high, in my opinion, after 14 years of experience with CRPS, you want to avoid anything with a high glycemic load. Check out your high glycemic load diet books. And uh, you, you don't want a high glycemic load. You want a low diet glycemic load. Uh, check out that kind of stuff. No bread, no rice, no pizza, no spaghetti, no pasta. It's... Uh, and when I made, and the problem is, and I've learned all these things and how I could, and, and no video games, I'll tell you that. When I got bad with my CRPS, I learned that high glycemic load diet, sugar, uh, uh, alcohol, um, and playing video, anything that made me stressed out, including video games, would destroy me. And, and in my opinion, that stuff doesn't just hurt. No, it makes the disease worse. It's like taking negative medications. It's the opposite of taking medications. It makes everything worse. Anyway, so I lost my job down there and, and, uh, Traun, and when I was near Traunstein with Dr. Goodman, and that's how I met him. And at the time, we did pretty much standard stuff for CRPS, you know, lumbar blocks, a few medications that... Um, but I did have a hard time getting in the area the medications that I wanted uh, and, uh, and I just kept getting worse and worse. Uh, but he and I started working very hard on trying to understand the disease better and trying to understand uh, how we could beat it. And I can't explain, Dr. Gumman is one of the most amazing doctors I've ever met. He's one of the kindest and most amazing doctors I've ever met. He was He's not like all the other doctors who I ever went to when I brought in a study. Most of the time they just looked at it and, you know, put it in their shelf and didn't really care about it. No, this guy, every time I brought him something, every time I brought him something, he was interested. He wanted to know how that might help with his CRPS patients. And so one day I brought up, we, I found out about ketamine in the internet and I brought him a study out of Australia, I believe, and he was interested in that. He did ketamine infusion for me. Uh, over 10 days in, a, in, a, in an emergency, in a, in a in critical care unit, because he'd never done that before. I was his first person. He was that open-minded. I was his first person. I brought him the stuff, and he, he, he was interested. Um, well, I remember there was a time I, 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 was, I was living down near Bechtesgaden. For a time, I moved down to Bechtesgaden, and I lived in a cow stall, in Bechtesgaden, because I'd lost my job, but there was a woman who I loved in Bechtesgaden, and she was an amazing, lovely woman um, who had her own problems, though. But she loved me for two years, even though I had all these problems, and I was down in Bechtesgaden and living in a cow stall. Living in a cow stall. And it was a finished cow stall. It was, uh, it was refurbished, and it was being used for storage, uh, but there was a, uh, like a 10 by 15 uh, room, 10 by 15 feet, 
uh, room where that, that was refurbished and had a small bathroom, and that's where I was living. And my parents were sending me money because I couldn't, didn't have any money anymore. So then, um, and in the winter in Bechtesgaden, I couldn't even wear, I got then to the point where I couldn't wear socks or shoes anymore. And in the winter in Bechtesgaden, with a meter of snow, I was walking around in sandals. So once in a while I would go to, you know, so I started going to Miami in the winters because I couldn't function in Germany anymore. And, uh, and when I was in Miami, I was doing more research and I found out about hyperbaric oxygen. And I started hyperbaric, hyperbaric oxygen treatments in Miami. And I pay, was paying, I think, $250 a session when, when I bought like 10 at a time or something like that. And, um, and the, it quickly became very expensive and wasn't... I, I thought I felt something, but I don't know if it's placebo effect now or not that I felt. But I realized I couldn't keep spending $250 a session if I wasn't making any money. And what was disastrous is there I met people who were desperate with other diseases, with their children. There was, they, they'd spent sixty, seventy, eighty, a hundred thousand dollars, and and I don't know if it worked. But I realized I couldn't keep doing that, so I decided to look. I found out that in Scotland they offer hyperbaric oxygen at very, very low prices. I think five pounds of treatment. That's like ten, maybe not eight, nine dollars. I don't know what it is now. That was seven years ago now. And so I decided to go to, to Scotland, and I spent three, three or four months in Scotland getting hyperbaric oxygen almost every single day at that very low price, and, uh, and it didn't help, it didn't help. So I feel now all of that was placebo that I thought I felt in Miami. Uh, so that didn't work. Uh, my, my relationship with a girl in back to Scotland fell apart, and... Uh, and I started a relationship with a woman at, up in Scotland who, interestingly enough, I met her at a party. And the first thing we talked to each other about was pain in our feet. And interestingly enough, she was a doctor. She was a student doctor. And uh, we started a relationship. And after about three months, after all the discussions we had about the pain in her feet, we, we realized she had CRPS in her feet also. So we both did lots of research. And I was... Um, uh, I was convinced that exercise was one of the keys to research, uh, key, keys to keeping CRPS under control because in 2003 when I had really, really horrible pain, I told you about the needles that went into my groin, in 2003 there were people who were saying to me, well, I, Christopher, why, maybe you shouldn't overdo it, maybe you should rest and let it heal. And so once in a while I would try that. And in 2003 there was a period for a month where I sat down on the, on the sofa and watched a lot of television instead of going out and hiking a lot. Well, within a month, I couldn't do anything at all. And I really, I couldn't take 10 steps to the kitchen or back without explosive pain. And one day I saw a show about Big Al, who, uh, Big Al was a dinosaur who died in Wyoming, I think 230 million years ago. And it's like the best preserved dinosaur, allosaur dinosaur in the world. Allosaur skeleton in the world. And, uh, and the, the paleontologist was talking about how this dinosaur roamed th thousands of square kilometers of territory and, and you know, and, and had to struggle to find water every day and had to kill, you know, giant wheels on legs, uh, meals on legs, you know, brought big, big dinosaurs they had to, to kill and eat. And when they had sex, when, when the Allosaurus was having sex, his partner was so big that they would literally break bones while they were having sex. And the, 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 the paleontologist, while I was sitting there, not being able to function anymore at all, trying to rest to let it heal better, the paleontologist said something that just blew me away. And, was, and he said, he said uh, the dinosaur had 21 broken and fractured bones and they were all healing nicely. And I was like, they were all healing nicely and he was moving and working his ass off to survive the whole time. And that's when everything changed, in my opinion, about how I treated CRPS. And for, for six weeks, I did four hours of explosively painful rehabilitation every day. I had so much pain when I got done with rehabilitation, I couldn't sleep at night the first week. Uh, I started by trying to walk up and down the hallway. Uh, when I broke out, I, I reached a point four weeks later, you know, I spent an hour uh, stepping up and down from, from steps. I, uh, I would, I would, I literally packed bags, my suitcases, and pretended I was a baggage handler at an airport. Uh, when I broke out and got, uh, was able to go out, to, out of the house again, 
I walked kilometers to to try to get that under control and to be able to do it. I remember one day I finally broke through and I felt there was a moment, you know, there were minutes, a few minutes where I didn't have any pain at all. And it just got better and better and better. And then I realized walking backwards uphill hurt a lot. And I thought, well, that must mean that the muscles of the nerves there are challenged and I have to rehabilitate them too. So for two weeks, I walked backwards uphill for two hours a day, maybe three weeks. And at the end of that period, my groin, the pain in my groin was completely gone. But for some reason, I could not get rid of the pain in my feet. Maybe because it was more chronic. I don't know. So anyway, this girl that I'm in uh, Scotland, uh, we I was working on rehabilitation at the time. That was my main thrust. I I was a member. At, I was a member. Oh, I've, ever since then, I've always been a member at the gym. I've been in the gym three or four days a week, or I I was spent you know I, or I was running or I've I played tennis, uh, but in 2000. Oh, and then with those exercises, I did manage to improve enough with my feet when I realized I had to do a specific exercise uh, over and over again. I, I learned that I could sit with my feet down again at work. So I took, job teaching Eng I took a job teaching English in 2011 or 12. And I managed to do that for a year and a half. But every time I got into the car to drive somewhere, the, I, I noticed that the pain in my groin started getting coming back and getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And worse. And I couldn't, it was about a year and a half before, before I couldn't function anymore. And I met, I met the loveliest woman of my life at that point, uh, after the relationship with a girl in Scotland ended, I met the loveliest woman in my life at that point uh, in Lisbon. And uh, that was the first time on the date with her in Lisbon that I, I had explosive pain in my groin again. And I knew that I had to get it under control, and I did everything I could to get it under control. I, I did. I started massive rehabilitation programs again. I tried. I tried everything, and I couldn't do it. I was walking backwards uphill again. I was lifting suitcases. I was moving. I bought a treadmill. Uh, I was on it two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. It did help, but I could not stop the decline anymore. And I don't know if it's because my central nervous system had already become so sensitized that it was simply impossible to rehabilitate anymore or what. My, my family was so desperate because I was about, I was, I was always talking about suicide at that point. My family was so desperate they bought me a $5,000 electrical stimulator unit. And now it is the opinion of some people who I consider to be experts in the field that you don't want to stimulate, you don't want to use electrical stimulation with CRPS because it makes the glial cells more active, which is what you don't want to do. The glial cells apparently um, are, are part of the problem. And if you're making them more active, it's not what you want to be doing in CRPS. But I, I didn't, I certainly didn't feel any improvement after my family spent $5,000 on this unit. And there was a point then with this incredibly wonderful woman who I, who I loved so much and I wanted to marry, but I didn't know how it wasn't realistic. I, I, uh, I, I, I couldn't I couldn't get into a car anymore when she came to visit me she lived she lived in Moscow she was a she was just a lovely lovely woman who she didn't care that I had pain she didn't care you know for a year and a half she she dated me and was happy to date me she even though I didn't have a nice car I lived in my parents basement I lost my job as a teacher because of pain I was afraid to travel with her but for a year and a half she dealt with that but you know, I think that at one point it was just too complicated for her. We went. To, she came here, and we wanted to go to Paris on the train. And for, I couldn't, I couldn't sit in the train anymore. I had to lay down in the train to get to Paris. I couldn't eat anymore. Like I said, the my my diet. I had to change my diet so radically that I couldn't have a single piece of tiny bread in a day without having horrible problems. I couldn't have any drink with any calories in it whatsoever. Everything in my life was destroyed. And this lovely, lovely person, uh, in October, November of 2013, uh, I, 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 after she met somebody then in her hometown, which I ex fully expected because I had so many problems and because, you know, it was her right to love somebody in her hometown, of course, because it's so much easier. Uh, she met somebody in her hometown, and uh, I fought for a year to get her back. And I started an, in an internet business, which, thank God, worked out. And I was able to actually pay for some, some things, including some 
uh, I bought myself a treadmill and, uh, and at least I had some kind of an income again, but I couldn't travel anymore. And she, and I want her back and she invited me to go to, in, in November of 2013 last year, she came to visit again because she likes to go shopping here and she, and she was so happy with our, with her visit that she said, Chris, let's go to Thailand together. And, and Southeast Asia. And she said, if you don't have the money for it, I'll give you the 3,000 euros. Because um, she has a good job. And, uh, and that's how much she didn't care that I had problems. But as much as she didn't care that I had problems, I still couldn't travel with her. And I said, look, I, I'm too, I don't have enough money and I don't have enough time and I don't, and my, my health isn't really cooperating with it. I couldn't figure, I couldn't even think of how I would get to do to, uh, to on the 15 hour flight to get there. I couldn't even under, begin to understand it because I couldn't sit in, in, I was losing even my ability to sit in front of my computer to do my work for my intermittent net business. And by that time I was spending most of my time on the couch laying down researching two things. One, how to kill myself, you know, how to kill myself, getting in touch with suicide assistance organizations. Two, I was re researching uh, bisphosphonate uh, treatments. I thought before I kill myself, I have to read absolutely everything I can get my hands on about CRPS. Everything, and this isn't. This is this is just part of what I read last year. This is the stuff that I met, I thought was worth printing out. I read so much stuff last year. Just about I could. I read studies and the footnotes to studies and the footnotes to studies and the footnotes to studies, and I came upon this thing called bisphosphonate infusion treatments and. Um, and I, f I discovered that the experts were in Italy, uh, in my opinion. They published the most studies on it, and uh, they, were the, they were used to, to, to using it. And uh, I felt that was my last chance at that point. It was my last chance because I was getting bad so quickly. It was spreading through my whole body. I was sweating horribly. My skin was turning colors again. My feet were turning blue. The veins were bulging out everywhere. And I, I, when I took a two-day break, I couldn't. It felt like everything was... From, from exercise, and I just wanted to walk somewhere. It felt like everything was going to break again. I was really ready to, to kill myself. So I told her I couldn't go, and I knew what I had to do. I Instead of going to Thailand, I went down to Verona, Italy, to get a bisphosphonate infusion. And, it, and I have to say, the studies seem to show that if you get the bisphosphonate infusion in the first year, it has a very high chance of success. Studies show, uh, some of the studies out of Paris show that even in the first three years it has an impact. But the problem is this, and I'd had it for 14 years. And when I went down there, they were honest, very honest with me. They said, Mr. Cleveland, we, you understand we're talking about a chronic case here. We do feel we can help you, but it's chron this is very chronic. And, uh, and, and when I went down there, I could barely walk. And it's what, the first month after the infusions, I was doing much, much better. Second month, I was doing significantly better, but by the third month, things were starting to get much worse again. So it, it had worn off. Uh, although my feet, my feet were not going downhill as quickly as my groin were. So I still, I still feel that the bisphosphonate infusion helped, but it's not a risk-free procedure either because the more you get bisphosphonates, in your bones because of the way your bone, your jawbone metabolism is apparently different than the bone metabolism in the rest of your body. Apparently it's a very high turnover, which is sensitive to bisphosphonates. So it turns out the more that you get these infusions, the more likely it is your jaw will die. And that is a very big problem in and of itself. So I, after knowing everything I know now, I tend to, uh, I would tend to avoid bisphosphonate fusions, unless it's in the very first year where you know you have a very high chance of success of eradicating the disease completely. So I came back and like I said, I was getting worse and worse and worse. And then finally, it, on, on, but on January 10th at three, three in the morning, I got a message from my, the woman I loved, Christopher, happy new year. I'm sorry, but I've met somebody else. And that was it. I was going to kill myself because I couldn't, I had so much emotional pain. I had so much physical pain. I had lost everything. I did. I could barely function in my job. The, the 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 infusion didn't look like it was working anymore. So I set the wheel in motion for suicide. I, I had prepared. I had almost prepared everything for my suicide. The pills, the the hanging myself because I couldn't deal with the the. I didn't want to wait long enough to get all the pills. 
I was, I was to get the pills, I was going to doctors' uh, offices here pretending I was here on vacation from the United States. And I said I had this problem or that problem and I needed medications for it. I would pay them cash and I would go and pick up my prescription with the medications that were required to end my life. I couldn't get one here. It was a bit more complicated and that was one I, I had to order from China. Thank God I didn't get it because now I have my life back again. I'm dating. I, I, I'm about to start working. I can, I can function again. I can sit here and talk to you. I'm happy. I can joke again. Uh, and, and, but, but right after, right when it looked like the infusion of the bisphosphonate, uh, bisphosphonate infusion was wearing off, I couldn't deal with anything anymore. And I, I had to go into a mental hospital. I spent three weeks in a mental hospital one night in lockdown because they thought I might kill myself. Uh, I couldn't deal with anything anymore. And thank God right then I, it was, a, it was a few months before that I had been in touch with Dr. Gilman again and I sent him information on naltrexone and some other medications and he and I told him, Dr. Gilman, I, I think I want to kill myself with assisted suicide, with the assisted suicide program in, well, there's a company that does this in Germany. It's not officially sanctioned, but it exists and they do operate. And they were just going to come by and put a, a bottle of sodium pentobarbital on the table and I would drink it for a couple thousand euros because there is some paperwork involved and they have to cover their asses. And I was just going to drink it and go to sleep, and I, but I needed Dr. Gilman's help. And he said, Christopher, don't kill yourself now. You have never been closer to a cure. Now, I want to say something about Dr. Gilman. He's, he's just an amazing, amazing doctor. He does not, he, he would not say we're talking about a cure here out in the open or in public. He did that, I think, with me to make, because he wanted to save my life. He said, Christopher, I will work to make you better. I will try to, I will try to help you. And for years, we had been talking and exchanging ideas on CRPS, and he was very interested to know how the treatments that I was experimenting with were, were, help, were helping me or not. And, uh, and he finally said to me personally, again, he would not make this claim to the world, but he said you know, to me personally to try to save my life, he said, Christopher, what we're talking about now here is, this, is the silver bullet. So what Dr. German did, did and, and, and is doing is you all obviously all heard of ketamine. Well, there's a closely, there's a drug that has a similar function uh, that, that doesn't have all the negative, um, that it doesn't have as many negative uh, toxic effects on the liver, which is like, it's called memantine. Or I think it's memantine in Germany or memantine in the United States. And you can hear the similarity, ketamine, memantine. And, uh, and it also is an NM, uh, NM, NMDA blocker. Oh, I'm sorry, I've forgotten exactly what the acronym is now. But it, it functions in about the same way as, uh, as, as ketamine. And uh, what he does is he gives it in high, very high doses in the hospital. Uh, at the high doses he gives it, it, creates, it can create hallucinations and can disorient you strongly. So he, he puts you in the hospital for 10 to 20 days while he's giving you these very high doses of this medication. Uh, and then, but what's amazing is that on top of that, he's, uh, he didn't just say, oh, interesting, I'll track some. No, Dr. Gurman was so interested in this, he spent, uh, he spent months researching it now, and I believe he's, he's told me he's, writing, he's trying to write a doctoral thesis on this. Don't quote me on that, but that's how I understood it, and that's how it translates into my brain in English. Um, and he's working on, on really understanding uh, how these drugs work on CRPS and he he saved my life with them and he didn't what was amazing to me is Dr. Goodman doesn't just take he didn't just take these studies and and just put them in a drawer no 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 he he wanted to understand which cells these medications work on and why and he's found other medications and supplements that help on top of the medications that I'm taking like uh, Montine and naltrexone, there he, he, he I think I'm on three other medications right now that uh, he's giving me because but here's the deal, none of these medications are uh, okayed for pain. They're they're okayed for things like uh, the memantine is is approved for dementia. Uh, naltrexone is approved for uh, drug addicts uh, at at its standard dosage levels. It's approved for drug addiction. Uh, for combating drug heroin addiction, I believe. Uh, 
and uh, another medication that he has me on, which has this, is also working on, on the glial cells, but in a different way than the naltrexone, is approved for high blood pressure. And so the problem is no doctors can prescribe these. Insurance companies won't pay for them, which sucks. And Dr. Goman called some of these companies and he says, you know, why you have something really potentially interesting here. Why don't you try and get it approved for pain? Well, the problem is, in many cases, the patents have expired. So it's not interesting to do this anymore. It's not interesting to, uh, to do the research uh, to try to get it approved for pain anymore because there's no more money in it. Anyway, so Dr. Guman, uh, uh, he has taken these, this research of mine. He saved my life. He saved my life. It literally, the reason I am here, I, I just cannot believe the reason I am here is because we found out how to control chronic CRPS two weeks before I was going to kill myself uh, through a, just a ridiculous research push and Dr. Guman's help. I, I'm convinced that just doing my research, I wouldn't have done it. Dr. Guman's additional research on top of what I brought him is why I'm here. Because every time I added another one of his medications, I felt better. And what's amazing is that now I've been taking this, unlike the, the, the bisphosphonate infusion, which wore off after a, a month and a half, two months, three months. I've been taking these medications now for five months, and I just keep getting better and better and better. Five months now. I have to stress, Dr. Goodman and I cannot say that the effect of these medications will not wear off like bisphosphonates did. Uh, we can't say that it won't wear off. We don't, we don't know. Uh, but what I can tell you is that I called somebody who has been working with naltrexone for three years, and he says it tends to just keep getting better. Uh, so I, if, I just have to say, if you are considering suicide because of your problem, don't. Don't do it until you have talked to Dr. Goman about your options and how he can help you. I have to say this too, again, a lot of these things aren't covered by insurance, and when you compare the prices uh, for, for private treatment in Germany to prices for private treatment in the United States, it's much, much cheaper here. Uh, there are lots of reasons for that, and it has advantages and disadvantages, but in my opinion, in a lot of respects, Germany has a much better health care system than the United States, and I have to admit, like I said, 10, 13 years ago, I think, in some respects, although Germany, I believe, was on the cutting edge of the ketamine uh, treatment for a while until I think it was uh, the, the anesthetic level dose uh, ketamine treatments were made illegal here, I believe. But anyway, there are, there are advantages and disadvantages to the systems, but I can tell you that I feel that you know, Germany has a very strong healthcare system, uh, one of the stronger ones in Europe. Uh, I know that not everybody's a fan of of this, you know, these le legally uh, controlled healthcare systems, but they, uh, I really had a good experience here with it in a lot of respects. Um, uh, and, but I, and I can tell you that if you come here and if you are treated privately here, it will be much less expensive than in the United States uh, or in Britain. And it's, it's probably, even by the time you throw in an air, air, airplane flight, it's gonna cost less. So the, he does still do ketamine infusions, but he's not so nuts about them now because of the toxic effects on the liver. Um, but he is much more interested in uh, using this memantine and having you, uh, treating you in the hospital there with very high doses of memantine because of its lower side effects and that he feels more comfortable with. And I have to tell you, the man, I, t I told him, I said, Dr. Goman, I've had CRPS for... 14 years now, nobody could help me. Nothing was helping me. I was going to kill myself. Uh, I have to tell you this too. I have other pain. I have another pain doctor who is without a doubt one of the leading authorities on pain in Germany. And I, w I was, because he's closer to me, I was with this pain doctor in his office. I was in that pain doctor's office being treated by another, one of his associates. And at the same time, I was in contact with Dr. Goman because he was simply one of the best and friendliest and pleasant 
and most inquisitive doctors I've ever met. And it's really the only reason I'm still alive is because I met him and we had developed this friendship, working friendship on chronic pain. Uh, so, oh, what was I going to say? I just got just a bit sidetracked. Oh yeah, so I was with this uh, another supposedly excellent pain doctor, but it was not doing anything at this other clinic. Nothing. They were giving me one medication that was that was supposedly uh, it was it was allowed to be used for CRPS, and it wasn't doing anything. They weren't helping me at all. They didn't understand CRPS at all, in my opinion. This was one of the leading pain doctors in Germany. It was one of his, in, in the office, of the lead, one of the leading pain doctors in Germany. And so when this all happened and Dr. Goemann leapfrogged, leapfrogged the, the, the understanding of chronic pain and CRPS, the treatment of chronic CRPS in, in Europe, in Germany, as far as I can tell, because I was doing a lot of reading, a lot of reading on CRPS. I said to Dr. Goman, I said this, I don't know if it's true, but I said this to him after all I've read and all the doctors I've worked with and all the, and everything I've done, I said, Dr. Goman, I think you're the most, without a doubt, you are the most advanced doctor for treating chronic pain in, in Germany now. And I think it's going to take years for, for a lot of Germany to catch up to him. And, and the reason I say Germany is because I, I'm obviously most familiar with the German system. I know that a lot of the, and I have to say this, Dr. Guman does not pretend that he's invented all of this. He's obviously, he, he says, Christopher, I'm working on, I'm building on the work of others, and, and I don't need, I don't need fame. I'm not interested in, in money even. He, he, he works on a salary. He, he, so no matter what happens, he doesn't get more money from this. He works on a salary at his hospital. It's not like it works in the United States. There's less of a, there's less of an interest here to come up with an idea that's going to make him money because he he gets a salary, right? Uh, he's not promoting this to make more money. He's he 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 doesn't have to pr promote it. What I'm doing is telling you how how he saved my life and why I think before you kill yourself because of your CRPS, you have to call him and talk to him. What he I'm sure what he'd like to do is you know if if you're interested in getting help with him, he'll, he'll probably obviously examine you. And if you have CRPS and if he feels it's necessary, he will, he will put you in a bed for 10 to 20 days while you get very high doses of this medication. And then he'll write you a prescription for the medications that you need uh, to get, uh, that you need when you're at home, or he'll write a letter for your doctor. Again, the problem is, depending on where you're at in the world, these medications, you might have to pay for them out of your own pocket. But my, my, my theory is this, my thoughts on that are, are this, uh, is that if I have to pay 300 euros a month or 250 euros a month for my medications and supplements, because I'm taking, he also feels omega-3 fatty acid, omega-3 pills, uh, like fish oil pills, are, are critical. We were discussing this last night. He feels they're critical. In, in the healing process to to um, to bring down the inflammatory reactions in the body. On the other side of it, omega six uh, omega six is bad for you, which is in many in a few books that I've read on health it, because it increases the inflammatory process. Um, you'll find omega six in like sausages, processed meats, things like that. So I started eating a, a really healthy diet with a lot of fish, a lot less. A, a lot less processed meats. Um, uh, he's also, but again, like I said, he's he's he has a medication combination now that has just really, really, really helped me. Uh, and I can't say how much it's helped me. It's just unbelievable. Every time I drive down to my house doctor here in the area, once a month, to for very for whatever reason. Every time I drive down there for 40 minutes and I get out of the car, I have less pain. It used to be I would get out of the pain, like in November or December last year, I would get out of the car, I was suicidal, trying to figure out how I could get to Italy. So for the bisphosphonate infusions, I could barely walk into and out of the office. I had such pain. I had such pain. Now, yesterday, I was down at the office. I got out. I walked to the office. I, I, I stood up. I sat down. I walked around. I drove back. I got out of the car. 
driving there and back, I had no pain. Now, I can't say I'm pain-free because there are times when I still have pain, but based on my experience in 2000, it might take some time, it might take some time to, uh, to go away com completely. Maybe it'll never go away completely, but I have to tell you this. I can live like this. I can live taking, right now I'm taking 12 pills of, of medications. Wait, wait, wait. One, two, three, four, six, maybe about 10 pills of medication a day, and I'm taking probably about 10 pills of supplements a day, vitamin C, omega-3, magnesium, 500 milligrams of magnesium a day. Uh, what else am I taking? Uh, so, if you have, I, you're watching this, I'm sure, because you have somebody that you love, or yourself, or, or because either yourself, you're, you're yourself are in pain and you're, you're, you're suffering with chronic CRPS, because <clears throat> most likely the viewers here are gonna have, you'll be chronic sufferers. You're watching this because either you're suffering or somebody you love is suffering <clears throat> or a really good friend of yours is suffering. I can't tell you how much I feel Dr. Goman has helped me and he obviously saved my life. Yesterday when I was at the doctor's office, my house doctor's office, I broke down and cried and I told him that even though my house doctor honestly didn't do, near, do nearly as much to help me. He was still supportive, and he has worked with Dr. Gilman to do to do a few things for me that needed to be done. And I just broke down and I cried and thanked him for saving my life because it was honestly a matter of two weeks. And the only reason I'm alive is because I had a friendship with Dr. Gilman. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's the only reason I'm alive is because I came across that wonderful individual who was so curious about chronic pain and how to help his patients. I'm sorry, but it's really, it's the only reason I'm alive. He worked so hard and he still does. You should, last night our conversation was full of talks about where in West Africa you can get certain types of pepper which have the highest uh, concentration of certain certain uh, ingredients which are really good for chronic pain. You should know this too. He feels that he, what he's working with, and I tend to agree, uh, can also be used for other types of chronic pain. Uh, and that's it's not necessarily just for CRPS, but I don't want to say anything more about that because he knows a lot more about that than I do. I tend to obviously concentrate on CRPS with my research. And I can tell you, and I have CRPS, so I know it works. But we're, he's beginning to work on other types of chronic pain. I'm sending my mother there because my mother has chronic pain in her legs from another problem, different type of illness. And I've told, and she also had shingles. I think, that's what, I think it's called shingles in English. And she has horrible. She still has horrible pain in her face and itching. And I, I keep telling her, "Mom, you have to go there because this is the most advanced chronic pain per doctor possibly in Europe. You have to go there and 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 try this. He'll take a look at you. He'll write you the prescriptions. Yes, you'll have to pay for them out of your pocket, maybe, but your life will be so much easier. I feel. But again, there are no guarantees on that. Right now, all I can speak from my own per personal experience is is uh, CRPS. So, uh, you know, he, he and I, we've gone through so much research together to figure this out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna provide the contact information again. His name is Dr. Goeman, G-O, with two dots over it. The O is like a uh, G-O-H-M-A-N-N. -N. And he's at the hospital in Traunstein, Germany, T R A U N. S T E I N T R A U N S T E I N. It's a beautiful part of the world. If you like mountains at all, you'll be you'd be right next to the Alps, and um, and uh, I'll provide the contact information below. You can either get in touch with me directly, and maybe I can help you out a little bit, or you can con I'll give you the information on how to contact him directly. I'll provide uh, an email address. For that or, or something like that okay and he speaks excellent english so if you're whether you're in france because you know one thing i've noticed about crps is that it seems that english is the international 
It is. It's an international language, obviously. And so I feel, I always feel sorry for people who speak a, a language with very limited, uh, maybe, you know, if they're in a small country like Greece, and if you only speak Greek, I don't think that your CRPS options are as, are as wide, obviously, because you really have to read English. Although I've noticed what was interesting, too, is a lot of, a lot of this groundbreaking work in the very interesting field of bisphosphonates was done in Europe and not in the United States. And I do feel bisphosphonates are a very effective, because you know, my friend went down to Italy right after I did, because he said, when I came back from Italy, I looked like I was alive again. I could walk and run also. And he, he said, Chris, I have to have this done, too. He begged the money from his, begged for the money from his family. It costs like 2,000 euros, I think. Uh, no, I think the infusions were 1,000 to 2,000 euros, and I stayed in a, in a bed, and, bed and breakfast right across the street from the hospital. Um, uh, uh, I, but, but again, bisphosphonates have a high risk of killing your jaw, although, you know, if you don't overdo it with too many infusions, it, it's used for cancer. Bisphosphonates are used for cancer. And if you don't overdo it, uh, you know, the risks are still relatively low, but I strongly advise against the infusions. But again, the risk of having CRPS is worse I think it's not a bad idea to have it tried once if you're at the beginning of your illness. But certainly the better option, in my opinion now, is getting these medications. And if you have never had a, had a bisphosphonate infusion, you can consider adding 5 milligrams of risodronate, risodronate a day to your, to your prescription uh, medications that you're taking. Uh, because if, you're, if you haven't had an infusion, the, the risk of bone death, jaw death, from, from taking medication, uh, risodronate bisphosphonates over the course of a year is really relatively low. I have a lot of information on that in here. If you want to know more, let me know. Uh, but I, I, I would, I, I'm considering discussing this with Dr. Goman about adding, uh, if, if a person has not had a bisphosphonate infusion already, adding risodronate 5 milligrams a day to the, to the polypharmacy that we're already using on me. And look, I I can I can do this I can do this again. <laughs> I, I, I can I can live again. Don't kill yourself. Don't despair. I was there. I know what it's like. And Dr. Guman literally saved my life. Okay. Information is below. Good luck to you. Have a nice day. Have hope. Call him before giving up. Have a nice day. Bye.